let's see a practical question. During 2020, A Limited acquired and incurred these financial assets and liabilities. So we are trying to see in this question how to in recognize assets, liability or equity in the beginning when we have issue. A debt security that is held for trading is purchased for 50,000 and the transaction cost rupees 200. You purchase, do you remember you purchase? So it is your asset. So when you sell a debt security, it is a liability, but when you buy it, it is a asset. Similarly, equity security is classified as fair value through profit and loss account are purchased for 20 and the dealer fee paid 375. You can buy somebody, uh, some company's shares, so that is the part of equity because it's not. A, it is your assets, investments, but the other side, the liability side, it's not a liability, it's equity. And you pay dealer fee of course 375. Then third one is a bond classified as available for sales is purchased at a premium at par. A premium to par, which means a bond is of let's say 1000 rupees, you are paying 1020 rupees that 20 rupee extra is the premium you are paying sometimes these bonds are issued at a discount also but it all depends about the company whether if there is a market for their bonds they will sell it at a premium but if there is no market and they want money so they can issue at a discount the par value is 1000 and premium is 100 and the transaction cost is 1500 so this is what they paid at the time of uh, Bond uh, issuing the bonds. A bond is uh, measured at much, uh, at amortized amortized cost. This is another word amortization cost, the amortization method. Let me just explain you a bit about it before we go to the solution. Amortization means, for example, you got let's say a license and you paid ten thousand rupees or twenty thousand rupees or even hundred thousand rupees, and it is for ten years. So what we do, we take that cost into 10 years dividing by 10 and whatever is the rate you got it that is how you amortize your cost that is what amortization cost so it is issued for 30000 and issuance cost is 600 you can see all the, and then requirement is determine the initial carrying amount of these financial instruments one by one we have looked into Look, the initial carrying amount is 50,000, the debt which you have taken. The transaction cost is 200, are expensed, which means that this 200 is not going to be added to the cost of your assets, but you are taking into the profit and loss account. The treatment applies to because the debt security is classified as held for trading. Anything you buy for trading purpose, I'm talking about financial institutions, uh, financial instruments, okay? So, if you buy financial instruments for the trading purposes, that's any extra cost to pay that will be recorded in profit and loss account. Therefore, measure and later on measured at fair value, which changes in the fair value recognized in profit and loss account. And later on, if you follow the fair value method, then whatever is in the value of the assets, again it will be reported in the profit and loss account. But the question is, is it trading? So once it is a trading, then it should be taken into profit and loss. The initial number one, number two, the initial carrying amount of 20,000, the dealer fee is 375, is expensed as a transaction cost. This treatment applies because the equity securities are classified as fair value with changes in fair value recognized in the profit and loss account. Again, you are buying the share of certain company. So what the fee you pay to the broker is again expense to the profit and loss account and you record it at 20,000. The third one was the initial carrying amount is 102,500. Initially it was 100,000. Then you paid two things. The sum of amount paid for security and the transaction cost to be added. This statement 
applies because the bond is not measured at fair value with changes in the fair value to profit and loss account. Fourth one is the initial carrying amount is 29,400. The amount received from the issuing the bond less the transaction cost. You see, it is a liability. So that's why you reduce it. Cost for liabilities, the transportation, uh, transaction costs are deducted, not added. If you are buying an asset, it is added. But if you are, let's say, issuing a liability, then it will be deducted. For liabilities, the transaction costs are deducted, not added, for the initial carrying amount. The treatment applies because the bond is not measured at fair value, which changes in fair recognized in the profit and loss account. Here, I am talking about the recognition. What about the derecognition? You know, once you settle the accounts, those assets or liability will be derecognized. Or if the contract is expired, means the time frame is given and in during time frame, if you're not maturing your deal, then if it expires, then again it will be derecognized. Or sometimes it happens, mutually you agreed and you cancel out the deal. So that can be de-recognized. Thank you very much.